from a secret location, it's the Tom Likas Show. Okay, hold on. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacky or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And um, amazed, amazed, amazed. Thank you so much for uh, writing us at Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. I am flooded with email from people like you. And I encourage you to write to us uh, while the show is in progress because uh, I do read these emails while I'm sitting here. And I'm blown away at so many emails and so many of the opinions coming in. It just blows me away. Anyway, thank you very much. And, you know, we've talked so much about politics. I want to take a break from politics and the World Series and everything else that's going on in the world. Talk about something completely else. I am wondering, I have noticed in my own life that there are certain things about myself that for whatever reason attract attention in a good way. And what I have found is that I wasn't trying to get anybody's attention. I wasn't trying to attract people to me or get them to talk to me or get them to like me. The things that people like most about me are things that that are based on my natural passion for whatever it is. For example, I'm amazed at the number of people who are interested in the fact that I love wine and I love going to wineries and I love tasting wine and that I know something about wine. I am blown away at how many people find that interesting because it isn't something that I did. You know how they, in these advice columns, they'll always recommend that you, you know, go join a club, go horseback riding, go sailing, go do something you like and Hopefully you'll meet other people who are doing the same thing. I did not get into wine because I was hoping to attract women or because I was hoping to get um, to make more friends. I, I didn't uh, get into it because I was hoping that uh, if I if I learned about wine, I'd I'd meet uh, rich people or I'd join clubs or things would happen for me. But all kinds of good things happen for me. This is like uh, an ace up my sleeve. Liking wine has gotten me introduced to so many people. People I had nothing else in common with, or at least if they had anything in common with me, they didn't think they did until we talked about wine. And then we found out how many other things we had in common. And I found out later than that that many of the people I have met, women I have dated, what have you, when they know I know about wine, oh my God, they go crazy. Um, I couldn't have planned it better, and I, I did not plan it. I'm very, very uh, uh, surprised at the reaction I get. I've met more people. I have gone on more dates, and you would be amazed how many women have asked me to order a bottle of wine. They paid for it. They just wanted me to go look at the wine list and pick a wine so they could learn a wine. Wow. It's quite amazing. So it's a quality that I had that it, it, it just naturally occurred. It naturally happened that uh, people found it appealing and interesting. It attracted attention. Now, I'm not going to stop. I, of course, now have tried to enhance my knowledge of wine. I have been the person to order wine for people's weddings. I have been the person to 
order wine for people's dinners at home. I have been the person who I, I, just about every time I go to dinner with a group, I'm the guy who orders the wine. And that really matters to people. It's a quality about me that I, honestly, I just like wine. I didn't think it was that important to people. But it was a quality about me that, that, that just so happened was important to others. It kind of surprised me about myself. I would like to find out if you have an ace up your sleeve like that. I would like to have, find out if you have a quality like that about yourself. I would like to find out if there's something about you that gets people's attention. You didn't even try. You know another thing? I, I'm not one of these guys, but let me give you another example of an ace up your sleeve. Golf. You can meet people who have nothing in common with you. By the way, I'm not a golf guy, not even a little bit. I have never played golf, and I have no interest in it. But I have watched what other people have done with it. I have seen that when someone walks into the room and has no connection to anyone, all they have to do is mention the word golf. And somebody in that cold, unfeeling, uncaring room will suddenly go, golf? I like golf. And suddenly, you're making friends. Suddenly, people are talking to you. In fact, there are so many women playing golf these days, I guarantee you there are golf guys who pick up chicks merely because they said they like golf. So I'm wondering if you have an ace up your sleeve. I'm wondering if there's some characteristic, some trait, some passion you have that when it is revealed, when it comes out, when people notice it, suddenly you are the center of attention. You are the person everybody wants to talk to. You're the guy every woman wants to meet. You're the woman every guy wants to meet. Suddenly, everybody's focused on you. All eyes are on you. Suddenly, rich people who didn't want to talk to you, suddenly they find you interesting because of something you know, something you care about, something you're able to talk about. I'm just curious if you have an ace up your sleeve like that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. This is Alex. How you doing? Great. All right. Hey, uh, I wanted to give you a call. And same thing with me is that I got into cigars when I moved to Los Angeles and just did it for something to do. And the people who are interested in cigars, I have a cigar event company, they just come out of the woodwork. You'll be somewhere talking to someone, oh, my grandfather smoked cigars, my best friend smoked cigars, tell me about this, tell me about that. People want to hear it. Even in today's you know, society where people hate, uh, hate t uh, tobacco, something that they come up with. They're just drawn to it. I agree with that, and I have seen that too. Yeah. Knowledge of cigars. What's that? that def knowledge of cigars, that definitely does get attention. Certainly. I mean, men, women, you know, we uh, we do events and we have uh, flavored cigars and women come up and gorgeous women. And they say, oh, well, how about this? I don't know. And they invariably give you the, I don't want something that big in my mouth line. So, you know, <laughs> that kind of that shot. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Tom, I'll tell you, can you kick me off the air? I'd love to hang out with you guys. I'll, I'll bring you something special. Oh, I always love something special. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that, that's true about cigars. And by the way, how many guys have had to meet the girlfriend's parents or the wife's parents or the wife's family in some other configuration? How many guys were getting no traction at all? Nobody was liking you. You were getting stink eye from everybody. And suddenly you mention cigars and her dad or her brother steps up and says, cigars, I love cigars. And it completely turned everything around. I'm wondering if you have an ace up your sleeve like that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Hey, take out a stopwatch. It's time for the shortest commercial break we've ever had. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like is 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show.
Marcus Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. I'm just wondering if you have an ace up your sleeve. What is it? Let's say hello here to Dove on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time, long time, man. Yes. Cool. Well, mine, is, it's pretty much, you could say music as a whole, but I'm an ace guitarist. And so do you whip out the guitar at uh, opportune moments? You know, I actually don't. Here's the thing. I I'm pretty humble with it. I started when I was like 10, inadvertently, kind of like you. I didn't mean to meet chicks with it or anything. Uh, you know, you with your wine, you just kind of stumble into it. My mom had a guitar, was lying there. I'm like, uh, uh, you know, I heard some Metallica on the radio or something. I'm like, all right, let's see if I can recreate this. I did. Uh, the friends liked it, you know. And so I would just practice and practice and Eventually, I just got wicked good, and uh, the word got around around school and whatnot, and it's just history since then. I'm just known as a, a guitarist and a music guru, and it gets me in everywhere. Really? Oh, big time. Even, you know, I called in before, actually, to talk about how I'm an idiot with sports. Total schmuck. I'm an aerospace engineer. And uh, as you can think, engineering places, like uh, especially the big-time uh, aerospace companies, pretty much have nothing but dudes there. There's like 2% chicks, so you've got a lot of sports talk, right? And uh, I don't know anything about it at all. I, I just don't know sports, pretty much because I was just uh, growing up playing this guitar. But they know I know music, and for some reason everyone loves music. So uh, it's like I have this, this safety card where I can, like, pass. I can be the guy in the room. I don't have to talk any sports or anything like that. They just know I'm cool with something. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes sense. And uh, that's what this is all about. Um, and, again, you followed your passion. I don't think you did this in a calculating way to try to impress people. You did it because you loved it. Correct. Right. And I, th I think that shows. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you, you got to follow it. I mean, it's like an addiction. I mean, I'd be lying if sometimes when I was practicing, you don't have images in your head of, like, uh, adoration or admiration that might come from some, some uh, listeners in the future, but that kind of fuels the passion, you know? It's okay. Um, it, it's just a really cool thing to have. And, and the thing is, this is kind of a catch-22 here, if there's people that are listening to this, they hear, oh, they've got this skill and they've got this skill. Well, I'm going to do that so I can get chicks. That's not how it works. You just got to fall into it, follow something, find that you are innately passionate about it, and just go for it. Totally forget about what anyone else thinks and just do it because you love it and you are going to just reap the benefits a hundredfold. I think that's absolutely right. Hayden on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. How are you doing, Tom? Doing great. Great. Good. Well, I love cooking, and I not only am a good cook, but I do gourmet stuff. And anytime I go to a party or anything, food comes up, I can cook it to the nines and then invite people over for a dinner party. And when they come, they go crazy, and they tell their friends, and I always have company. Wow. It's and, fun. Uh, I love and, it. And what does it do for when you say it's an ace up your sleeve? What does that do for you? What unexpected benefits have you got? Well, I mean, one, I always have something to be proud of that I can talk about and impress people with. But two, I got, you know, I can back it up and then I invite people and suddenly I'm having dinner parties of 30 people over at my place just because they love what I do. And I always have people over, and I always have company, and I always have people excited to come over. And I I get to be proud of what I put on the table. And I love cooking. I just enjoy the whole process of it. How great is that? Yeah, it's really fun. And you always have an excuse to invite someone over. You start talking about food, and you'd be like, oh, my God, you got to come over and try my cooking sometime. It's the easiest way to get a date. So Yeah, so you can pick up guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really need to, but if I wanted to, it's super easy. But you yeah. can. I mean, it's like uh, uh, what, what's great about it is women always need plausible deniability. and You can always say, well, I was just inviting you over to try my food. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a good cook. I wanted you to try it. <laughs> Thank you for that. Diego on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How's it going? Going great. 
That's fun. That's great. Great to hear. I uh, haven't been listening to your show for too long, but love what you say. I'm a, I'm a master sommelier, so uh, I appreciate your, uh, your passion in wine. That's what I do for a living. And I moved here from Italy about two years ago to uh, pursue the, uh, the wine career. I actually came here to open the Italian Sommelier Association here in California. And are, I, you I, from, are you from Italy originally? I am, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. I am. And uh, actually, I'm, a, I'm an Italian citizen. I'm a permanent resident, but I'm an Italian citizen. Uh, and I uh, came here two years ago uh, to open up the Italian Sommelier Association. I'm, you know, I've been, I'm a wine rep for a uh, medium-sized import distribution company, and uh, I do free, freelance consulting for restaurants as well. And the wine thing, like you mentioned, definitely has been an ace up my sleeve. It's helped me, you know, withstand the crisis, the economical crisis, you know, make a lot of connections. And and, and funny thing is that my parallel activity, you know, one of my, my other passions is, is music. I'm actually also a freelance drummer. So that's pretty pretty funny. I'm a solo oh drummer. So yeah, so when I when the wine thing doesn't go too good, you know, I do music and when the music thing doesn't go too good I do wine. So I always have something else to turn to. Which is wow. pretty good. Those are both good ones. Yeah, but the, well, the funny thing is, is that the caller that called in before about being a guitar player and being an ace up his sleeve, for me, in, here in the U.S., it's been the opposite. Like, when I say that I'm a musician or I'm a drummer, I get the, oh, oh, wow. But when I say, like, I'm a sommelier, I'm a master sommelier, and I work for, I do consulting, I teach for a sommelier association, I teach for master sommelier classes, everyone's like, oh, wow. <laughs> so it's like... It's actually been much more of an ace up my sleeve to be to be in the wine uh, in the wine business than in the music business. Well, uh, and I, I I think that's a, a cultural difference between Italy and the United States. People are more impressed by wine simply because they think that there's money attached to it. Exactly, and that's exactly what I, what, what my opinion was that I wanted to, to to say was that I think it's because here in the U.S. at the moment it's kind of like a trend. Uh, the wine thing is kind of like a trend in Italy that it's, you know, a thousand and thousand year old tradition. If you're into wine, it's like no big deal. It's like, so what you know, isn't everyone, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know, but here in the U.S. It's, it's like the trend at the moment. And it's in the last five years, it's really boomed. I guess that, you know, it's, it's it makes things, it makes it a real sleeve up your uh, ace up your sleeve to be in the wine to wine. Uh, so have a passion for wine, whether it's music in, in Italy, if you say you're a musician, then that's the ace up your sleeve. Yes. Because wine is ubiquitous in Italy, and it isn't thought of as some upscale treat. It is something that's at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Absolutely. And I'm sure it's not your case, because I know you really know a lot about wine, and that's really, really great. I totally respect that. But a lot of people that pretend like they know things about wine now, to use it as an ace up their sleeve, they really know nothing about it at all. Well, I, I do a radio show where I interview winemakers week after week after week, and I go to wineries in different countries, and I'm not a master sommelier because I haven't taken the course. But, um, you know, this is something that I do on my vacations. And that's how you know it's for real, because who would waste their vacation going to wineries unless they really loved it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally respect that, Tom. Diego, thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it. Uh, what aces do you have up your sleeve? It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Andy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. Well, my ace up my sleeve, I, too, am a musician. I'm a guitar player for rock and roll bands. And um, I'm 20 years old right now, and I live uh, in Denton, Dallas-Fort Worth area. And pretty much uh, being a guitarist is uh, responsible for me knowing all the friends that I've had for the past close to a decade and responsible for me getting pretty much, like, getting laid every time I've had in, you know, forever, man. And, you know, it's just such an important part of my life. And before I was in a band... And before I was really involved in music, kind of struggled meeting people and so forth. Once I got into this, once I got good, I mean, people all the time are just, like, complimenting me on what I can do, what how good my band is, and chicks love it. I mean, you know, musicians, uh, you know, independent musicians, we don't make a lot of money, but we, de we definitely get laid a lot, you know? I'll bet you do. And, uh, now, did you get into a band to get laid, or was that just a byproduct? Well, that is a byproduct. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm only 20, so you know, you know, for the past few years, you know, sex is like one of my top priorities. I'm a kid, you know, but really, the reason I got into music, I truly, you know, love it. I love playing with my friends. You know, it's very important to me, and 
you know, it gives me a lot of relief and stress. I mean, it goes deeper than just, you know, getting laid. But uh, it's definitely a byproduct, and it definitely pays off. I mean, you don't have to be rich or famous to, to you know, go up on stage and have a good time. And, you know, it, it's just done a lot for me. I mean, it gets me in the clubs, you know, when, I, when I'm underage. Or I get to drink even when I'm underage, you know. I, I can be walking down, you know, in downtown or, like, in a mall or, you know, going shopping in town, and a random person who... I don't recognize, you know, would have come to one of my shows, and they're just like, you're awesome, man. Uh, you know, they just, like, want to ask me questions and want to know more about me. And and before I was in a band, that kind of thing just doesn't happen. And, you know, you know, it's really hard to put yourself out sometimes. And with music, it kind of puts yourself out for you. And, you know, that's basically, that's basically the best part about it. Uh, there's no doubt that it is a way to express your feelings and your opinions uh, without actually having to come out front and uh, speak them. Uh, Adolfo on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Doing great. Well, I don't know if you consider an age, but uh, I've always been a fan of motorcycles. But uh, back in 2003, I purchased my first Harley. And any time you bring up a Harley, I mean, it's someone knows someone that's right to Harley. Really? And I tell you what, it's uh, I've met tons of people, tons of people, uh, just in the, just by mentioning, you know, that you're right. Uh, I'm in the automotive uh, business, and uh, just by mentioning or people finding out that I ride, um, I've gotten so many customers just because of that. Wow. Uh, that's fascinating, and uh, I wonder, do you meet also, like, people you thought you had no chance of meeting, famous people, rich people, successful people, because many of them ride Harleys. Well, that is true. I was, uh, funny you mentioned that, but I was in Vegas one time, uh, this was a couple of years ago. Uh, I was uh, down there with a few friends, and we ended up, uh, we ended up partying with uh, Wesley Snipes because of... Uh, because of the motorcycles. Really? And that, no joke, that was uh, down at the uh, Bellagio. And not the Bellagio, we were down there, it was about 10 of us. Uh, we rolled up in the motorcycle, and he must have noticed that we were uh, at the bar drinking. And uh, we ended up taking off from there to go up to the ghost bar at the... Uh, at the uh, once That's at the was, Palms, isn't it? At the Palms, at the Palms, at the Palms, correct. And uh, when we were there, he said he had noticed us at the Bellagio, and he, next thing you know, he was hanging out, and uh, we, needless to say, we were, uh, we were drinking with the uh, Wesley Snipes. Sounds good to me. Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six two. The Tom Likas Show. It's not like his show. For the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had before. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. I was just curious about your ace in the hole, your ace up your sleeve. The, the thing that uh, that people find out about you that makes you fascinating. You, know, you didn't try to be like this, it just gets people's attention. Daniel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Yeah. Um, I'm, okay. Um, how you doing? I'm doing great. Well, let me tell you, um, regarding your topic, okay, what I do, I do loss mitigation for various lenders. For, um, this, these are home mortgage loans. And I can be at a bar, and I just mention the type of workouts that I work out for some of these people that are default on their mortgages or some of these properties that are up for a short sale. And I have people all around the room. Their uh, their ears just go up like Dobermans. Well, right now, that's the hottest <laughs> uh, topic there is. I'm telling you, Tom, every day. And every are you out day. there foreclosing every day? Is that what you're doing? Oh, um, uh, foreclosing? No, making out workout proposals. Just workout proposals. I mean, I have some clients that I can get them into a uh, loan modification that haven't paid their mortgage for over a year. Wow. I mean, um, you know, no work, you, you can still get a loan, a loan modification. And just mentioning that kind of stuff is my ace in the hole. I mean, people just stop what they're doing to listen. 
I mean, everybody I have, wants that. <laughs> right now, yes, Tom. Those are the times that we're in right now. I think but. you're right about that. JB on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? How you doing? Doing okay, JB. Hey, my ace in the hole. I'm a fugitive recovery investigator. Uh, known known uh, as a bounty hunter, modern day bounty hunter. So you are out uh, doing like uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter. You're out there, uh, so kind of skirting the law, we're living on the edge, trying to find people. Yes, sir. That's what I do, and I and I'm good at what I do. And I can I, I can walk. I can just be somewhere and say you know somebody has say what you do. And I say I'm I'm, I'm a fugitive recovery. They go, what is that? Modern day bounty hunter, and all eyes are on me. Yeah, it, 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 I, I go in a club and they ask you for my ID. I open my wallet. They see my badge. They just tell me come going in. <laughs> I've, been, I, I, I've been doing this for like 15 years, Tom, and I probably been stopped by the police in maybe four times in the last 15 years and got out of every ticket and just reaching for my driver's license. Police see my badge. They say. Just slow down. Wow. Look at you. And when you're at a party and you bring up the fact that you're a bounty hunter, does that uh, put all eyes on you suddenly? Oh, man, you wouldn't even know. I, I could be anywhere, Tom, and, 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 you know, just talking to girls and they'll, they'll go, you know, what you do for a living. I tell them, well, you know, I'm a bounty hunter. And, you know, they thing, you know, I could be in the sack. Because, because the, it, it's, the, it's the the danger that they see. I, I don't really know what it is, but when 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 they listen to what I do and I tell them the stories and things like that, they just get so fast. I have to wonder if uh, all that uh, reality show business has uh, gotten women interested in that. I hear we've lost our connection, JB, but let's move on here to Caesar on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing, Father? Great, son. Great. I autocross. Uh, I've been doing it for two years. Um, whenever I'm out um, at a party, group of friends, um, just tell them, oh, I can't drink tonight. I have a race tomorrow. And everyone's like, oh, you race? Well, you race. So I tell them, I mean, I auto. I started out autocrossing. Now I'm moving on to road racing. And uh, I, I tell you, women, women love to hear about, you know, you out there on the road course and, and racing. I, everyone thinks about Fast and Furious crap. It's nothing like that. But um, definitely gets a lot of women interested. Really? So you just whip that out like a business card. But again, it's not something you contrived or concocted. That's what you're really interested in. Yeah, it's it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, expensive sport, but um, it definitely now you know the past I would say past three months uh, that I've gone out to parties. I've been I, I have so many Halloween parties to go to because of it that. You know, my um, I, I have parties to go to pretty much all the way to next uh, till next Friday till to Halloween. Wow! So it's it's, it's definitely uh, an eye catcher. Guys, go autocross. It'll 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 get you in the uh, into all the parties. Well, I'll bet that's true. Haley on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Long time, first time. How are you? Doing great, Haley. Well, I was just going to say my little ace in the hole is I've actually been playing poker since I was five years old. I'm from Texas, and I live in Southern California. And any time I bring up I've been playing poker since, well, that was the first card game I could play, it's just been the, the talk of wherever I'm at. And it also really helps me out because I'm in the casino industry, which is what I'm really passionate about, and gambling and being able to talk to everybody about it. It's just really been helpful. Wow. Look it's, at that. That's like, you know, another one is when women say they smoke cigars. That gets guys' attention. Yeah, I, I tend to get guys' attention when I say I'm a poker player, and I'm a casino host, too. So it really goes, you know, hand in hand with the whole casino industry and the sex sell of Vegas and what have you. Were you ever able to chat up a guy using poker? Yeah, actually, my, uh, it was a, well, he's my ex-boyfriend now, but that's one of the things that, you know, really brought us together was poker, and he came home, met the dad. My dad's into poker, and it was just his easy way to meet the whole family. And he ended up winning our little home game, 
and took everybody's money. But it was really cool because it was just easy for him to talk to everybody, and poker's just kind of been one of those things that's always been in my family. Wow. Haley, uh, thank you for that. I appreciate the call. Here's David on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. David. How's it going? Great. Long time, first time. Thank you. I'm really happy to get through. This is actually my first time calling, and I got through, so I'm really happy. Um, I was calling because my ace in the sleeve is actually, um, I'm 21, and I'm a break dancer. So break dancer? Time, yeah. Are you, calling break- from the, are you calling from 1987? Where are you calling from? Oh, well, actually, Tom... I call it break dancing because that's a generic, generic term, television term, given by news in the 1980s, the time where we actually heard about it. But it's actually called this b-boying, and it's much more than just spinning on your head and doing windmills. It's evolved so much. Like then, it's like it's like gymnastics or any other sport. It's worldwide. Everyone does it. And I'm actually in a dance crew. But does everybody know that? You know, when you call this uh, the ace up your sleeve, it's like, well, wait a minute. Don't people automatically say, oh, come on, that's the 80s. What are you doing? Well, actually, the first thing I, people always say is, oh, my God, can you spin on your head? And it's actually quite annoying, but when it's a hot blonde or something like that, I don't really care, you know? Yeah. That's, it, I really don't have to explain to anyone because, like, like you showed me, you only use it to get laid. I mean, nothing more. Right. Actually, you'd like to be spinning on her head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, not spinning on her head. That'd be kind of painful, but... So I'm definitely with the pump them and dump them. And uh, I just want to thank you, Tom, because because of you, since I was 17, I got turned on to you from one of my best friends when I was going to school. And uh, because of you, I got no women pregnant. Every time I have sex, I wear a condom. I never waste any more emotion in women than necessary. They're completely useless, and they strive away from my actual career goals. And because of you, I realize that, and I want to personally thank you for that. Well, David, as you can tell, I'm here to help. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah. With the shortest commercial breaks on record. The Tom Likas Show. What ace do you have up your sleeve? You know, there you are, you're at a party, nobody's paying any attention to you, and suddenly you blurt out your personal passion or your interest, and then everybody is crowded around you. What is it? Let's say hello here to Ken on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Ken. Hello, Tom. What's up? First time caller, long time listener. Long time listener, first time <laughs> caller. Well, I heard I heard the topic today, and I had to call in. I'm a uh, a facial plastic surgeon who exclusively does uh, hair restoration surgery. Oh, look at you! And 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 you bring this up casually in conversation. Well, it typically comes out, you know, people in L.A. Are, are keen to know what you're doing. And, you know, if you drive a cool car, they want to know what's going on. And uh, so I tell them I'm a doctor, and then typically it gets probed a little further. And, you know, I've been doing uh, hair restoration surgery exclusively for the past five years. And and people, you know, that that gets a lot of people's attention. You know, the, the ladies like the facial plastics aspect of it. And, and of course, uh, a lot of guys want to hear what I have to say. You know, they kind of say, hey, come on over here and talk to me about it. And, uh you know, it's a it's a hair by hair transplant now with an, with very natural results. The plugs are a thing of the past, and I find that works extremely well at uh, parties, bars. In fact, one time I was uh, I was at a, a place in Venice, and I, I kind of just sort of you know whispered, hey, "You don't want to be too uh, out loud about it." But I, I told this one woman, I said, "Yeah, you know, I'm a plastic surgeon. I do hair restoration," and and her face lit up as though as though she'd seen Santa Claus, and she called all her friends over and. Uh, Needless to say, uh, you know, we uh, we closed that deal. Look at you. Do you walk around with business cards? I do, of course. Of course. Of course. I get asked for them quite a bit, yeah. And has it helped you uh, has it helped you get laid? I would absolutely. Absolutely. You know, but uh I, I would I would have to say a resounding yes. Because you're a doctor or because it, but... because you're a doctor or because you like nailing bald chicks? <laughs> Luckily, uh, women tend not to bald until they're uh, much older than I am. So yes. it's, uh, you know, mainly because I like to, to, to uh, the younger women. I, I, I Maybe prefer. their mom is bald. Who knows? 
You never know. Yeah, mom, mom, daughter combos. You know, I've heard you talk a lot about that. <laughs> so, so there you go. You walk into the party and you tell everybody you're a plastic surgeon and uh, the, then you're a hair restoration doctor and they fall at your feet. That's correct. That's what, and it happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they ask for the car and they're, where's your office? You know, I got an office in Beverly Hills and it's, uh, it's, it's a cool gig. Yeah. Look at you. Adam on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Adam. Yeah, I know you don't like felons, but I tell you a story that uh, I involuntarily killed a guy in a uh, parking lot and did time for it. Wait, wait, you involuntarily killed a guy? <laughs> yeah, I involuntarily, by the way, of he pulled a weapon on me and we were in a, a brawl, basically, in the parking lot of a bar. Both of us intoxicated and I choked him to death. Really? Yeah. And but you, were only you were only intending to choke him till he couldn't breathe, but not to death. <laughs> not to death. I mean, it was. I mean, it was. It was completely. I was froze up. I was scared. And yeah, it happened like that. Okay. So you you uh, did you get caught? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did time for it. I got a twenty five year sentence. I did 11 years in uh, Texas prison. and So you but, wait a minute. Let me understand this. In Texas, you could choke a man to death and then be out in 11 years? Yeah. Wow. Well, well you know what? If, if you're a child molester, you can be out in two. But that's another story. <laughs> I, had, I thought Texas was a law and order state. I had no idea. Well, they are and they are not. That's, that's, the, that's the funny thing. But anyway... Um, so you, how do you casually drop that into the conversation? Hey, I killed a guy. Well, how do you get that in? No, it, yeah, it's not a casual conversation. It, it's just that you, when I'm out with my friends and I hang out in CD bars because I, I, I just kind of like that. But it always comes up, and you know that hey, yeah, you know. Adam just got out of prison two years ago, blah, blah. I'm sure in seedy bars that's a good haste to pull out of your sleeve. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to be, you know, at the Kiwanis Club and drop that into the conversation. No, not at all, not at all, not at all. But it, it, it does, it's like, you, you wouldn't believe, Tom. I mean, I know you're, uh, you're upper scale, you have, you know, higher class chicks, but uh, down here in uh, Dallas, it's, yeah, these, some of these girls, you know, the little rocker chicks, they like that. They and like that. It's so a, if, you met, it, if you meet some young chick who just ran away from home and she's just barely 18, no, 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 you say, no, hey, no, sweetie, no, no, come no. here. You know I killed someone once? And then, no, no, boom, no, you're, you're no, in bed no, with them immediately. <laughs> no. I, 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 it, that'd be nice, but no. It's, it's usually uh, these uh, chicks that have been around for a while, and they're just, you know, they're really hot rocker chicks, and... And for some reason, they like that that whole, I don't know. that They survived a meeting with Phil Spector, and then they meet you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, for real, it's, it's, it happens, and it's, it's nice. I mean, it, I, don't, I, don't, I don't instigate it. I really don't. I don't talk about it because I don't like to talk about it. But every once in a while, my voice, you know, it's... Do you it's, say that to the girls? What? Do, here, i got a question for you. What do Phil Spector and I have in common? <laughs> no, not at all. No, it's just... It, it and it is, not that, it is not that you produce the Ronettes. No. No, it just it happens with, with, one, with, my, with my boys, and they... And uh, it just comes up. It's one of those topics, and it's one of those places where everybody knows everybody, and... And all of a sudden, you know, there's so many new people coming in. You have regulars at these bars. There's like four or five bars that, you know, I frequent. And every once in a while, you know, you get these, these, you know, the new chicks come, you know, do the rotation. And they're like, hey, you know, this guy, blah, blah. And next thing you know, I got this chick, you know, with her eyes all bright on me. And I'm like, what the hell? And and it's all about it's all about that. I mean, I'm not, I mean, it's, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's ugly and it's nice. Boy, I imagine that's true. Tara on the Tom Likas show. What's the ace up your sleeve, Tara? Hi, Tom. I am a burlesque dancer. Do they even have burlesque anymore? I think burlesque died. No, they got it all over. I thought with Pinky Lee that was the end of burlesque. 
No, and actually in Europe it's very big, and that's where I'm going to be next year performing. In Europe? Yes. I've got shows in London, Stockholm, and Milan all in the next uh, six months. Now, how do you drop that into the conversation? Uh, whether or not I want to tell someone to come to one of my shows that's coming up or if my boyfriend brings it up. And then the person that's listening, then they want to bring all their friends over to introduce me. And I'm the most normal person. It's not a big deal. So it's pretty funny. You get all free drinks at the bars. or. And do you get totally naked? Uh, down to panties and pasties. Really? Yes. I thought that was dead. No, 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 not at all. It's very big. Do they, uh, by the way, like old time or less, do they also have comedians? Yes. Yeah, there's always an MC. It's usually a, a funny gay man or something. What are the jokes like? Uh, usually making fun of people in the audience. I see. Curves in the front. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so a gay comedian goes in front of the audience and makes fun of the pervs up front before yeah. you get down to your pasties. Right. <laughs> and and how much does this cost to see? Um, it can go anywhere from ten dollars to fifty dollars. Uh, really? If you go to a real elaborate club that has like dinner and stuff, it's going to be pushing closer to a hundred. So, if I get a coupon at Val Pack, I can save some money. Yes, of course. <laughs> Our email address is Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.